Riverside, California, what is home life like for Cheryl Miller? So if you ever watched Mayberry, you know, the Andy Griffith show, we were Mayberry back in Riverside. Really? Uh, oh, it was, you could ride your bike up and down till midnight. My dad and my mom did a great job. Thank God my mom was a registered nurse because it came in handy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we just, we played basketball, we played baseball, and yeah, it was it. Tell me about your dad, Saul. Musician, basketball player? He ran a tight ship. And but did it, you like that? Need that? I needed that. I think all of us needed that because uh, of the climate. It was, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. And my dad was the type of person that he would, um, because, you know, it got tight financially. So as a musician, you know, in the military, he would go off at jazz clubs and make extra money. What kind and of music is he playing? Miles Davis, the whole, you know, work with all these jazz legends and... Who did he work with? Everybody. Coltrane? Coltrane, big time. Oh, wow. And so, but we never knew that. We never knew that side. Because my dad was like, I'm in the military and everything, but he would do that whole thing. And, and this is what I loved about my dad. And you know what? I think it's hard sometimes looking at the dynamics of, you know, a dad and a mom. If somebody's got to end up not being the bully, but being the taskmaster and being the one who's not liked. And my dad wasn't liked a lot of times. But um, if I ever came home or any of us ever came home, and said, hey, dad, you know what? Uh, I'm being bullied or I'm being this. That was, dad was already there. Okay, so he's the taskmaster. Master. Yes. Mom is? Mom was like, mom, I need you. Like, mom was the nurturer, but my mom had a gentle side to her and a softness to her um, and a gift of gab, a gift of gab. And, you wonder why I'm on your show right now. Yes. <laughs> I, I was wondering that you, like, you weren't afraid to show emotion. You played with emotion. But you got that from your mom more than your dad? But yeah. Just, it was, if you're going to do something in life, do it passionately. You know, you, and, and some people may not be like that, but if you're going to do anything, be your best. Be your best. Don't be afraid. And there's no such thing as failure unless you don't put your best foot forward. And that's what my mom instilled in this. But also, are you trying to get dad, do you understand dad's love if you're playing basketball? Like there's a connection there? Oh, Did, there, did you understand no, that? No, I understand the discipline. I understand, now, and look, I love my mom and the pom-poms. Here we go, <laughs> here we go, yeah. But you had to have a discipline and a game plan and that's what he instilled in me as well. And I think I have, and I'm blessed to have that balance. When did basketball take on importance in the household? Early on for me, um, and for my brother Reggie, is because my two older brothers, Saul Jr. and Daryl would have their friends over. And I remember really early on, um, not being able to play because of my older brothers, but what they would do if the ball went you know, over the hedges or something like that, then they're like, go get it. And I get to run and jump over the hedges, break my neck, get it, dribble back, and pass it to them. And I thought that was the greatest thing. Damn, I thought it was the greatest thing. I got the dribble, and, you know, Reggie and I would, you know, we would, you know, exchange times and, and whatnot. And it wasn't until uh, my brothers would go off with their friends that Reggie and I started playing. And all of a sudden, it was easy to shoot. It was easy to dribble. Who taught you to shoot? Wasn't Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that it just came natural. And I don't know when and how it happened, Dan, that I love to play. Why did it mean so much to you? Because people told me I couldn't do it. That's what motivated you? Absolutely. Absolutely. My brothers would bring um, their friends over and, you know, their little brothers and everything else. And it became this competition where I bet you my sister can beat, you know, your little brother. And I would play and everything else. And then um, 
When I won, we would like walk down probably maybe two, three miles to Dairy Queen and I would get a Buster Bar. I'm like, this is just good. <laughs> this is, oh Lord. If I keep winning, Buster Bars for everybody, so. Your dad rode you pretty hard though. Yeah, dad. Um, Did you understand why? No. And it wasn't until I was 13 years old and there was an article in the newspaper, she's 13 and she could play. And that's when I think my relationship with my dad changed. But how, how did it change though? What did, what did he do? I wanna be honest with you guys. I'm not gonna say that he wasn't critical, but he was very observant and everything had to be matter of fact. Everything had to be to a certain degree. Um, he inserted himself, and I'm glad he did because he kept a lot of he kept a lot of people away from me that probably didn't have my best interests at heart. But he also kept a lot of people away that would have made my life normal. You got attention in the family, and it's hard to do when you got older brothers. Mm -hmm. Did you understand that too? That I was, I was viewed differently, treated differently, looked upon differently? Well, that was a wonderful thing and blessing for me with my two older brothers is they were able to buffer my dad a little bit, like back off, otherwise she's gonna quit. If you keep pushing her, she's gonna quit on you. So that was a good thing for me.